state in Egypt, the new life begun. And that's why when you leave your slavery, when you go away from your slavery, don't look ahead. Don't look back, sorry. Don't take the old east with you. But celebrate your freedom in the newest newness of new life that you have. When I tell you all this story, does it remind you something? If you read the New Testament, it should. Because we were slaves of sin, says the Bible, right? The Apostle Paul is pretty big in saying that. We were slaves of sin, but now we are servants of God. In 1 Corinthians, Paul writes, Jesus, Yeshua, is our Passover lamb who sacrificed for us. And because of that, let's celebrate the feast, not with the old east of sinfulness, but with the new bread, unleavened bread, of godliness and new life. The Exodus back then, in the book of Exodus chapter 12, previous chapters and following chapters, were a foreshadow or a certain prophecy of the things to come. Prophecy pointing to what Yeshua was supposed to do for us as he did. Now it's a time for us uh, to uh, be reminded of 10 judgments done in Egypt. Do you remember 10 plagues that were there? Do you? Okay, it's a test. Uh, fill some uh, wine, uh, wine, sorry, grape juice <laughs> into, your, into the cup. You have the, uh, you have the, uh, you can see the a small plate on your table like this, and you have a knife. So what you do? Now I show, uh, I show that you uh, don't do it yet, but be ready to do that. Just see what I'm doing. So, just you dip your knife into uh, into your uh, glass or cup. And you, uh, and then you take some, uh, so like some drop from your cup onto the plate. Why are we doing that? Because uh, we name the all, we name all the judgments, and take some wine of some grape juice that represents the joy. Uh, because we are sorry for the Egyptians who should suffer so much of the Pharaoh's stubbornness. So we 10 times do that and reduce our joy a little because we are sorry for the Egyptians, okay? But now the test. You're going to name all these 10 uh, plagues one after another, okay? And I will count that it's exactly ten, uh, 10. So, uh, sorry. Tell me, uh, so tell me what... Uh, the last one will be the slaying of the firstborn. But tell me all the rest. Okay. Tell me. The, one after another. So. Blood. Okay. Blood. And, uh, and one drop goes out under the, under the plate. What next? Or just whatever order. Just tell, uh, give me ten. What? 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 Mats. 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 Mats, sorry. <laughs> what, uh, what is next? Frogs. Frogs. It's three. 
multiply, it's four. Boils, it's five. Lice, mice. <laughs> Locusts, it's six. Hail, it's seven. What? Darkness, it's eight. And we need one more before slaying of the firstborn. I just care, uh, yeah, so, uh, well, as the cattle were dying, right? How is it called? How was it called? Okay. <laughs> cattle plague. Well, <laughs> And the last one, slaying of the firstborn. So God did actually 10 miracles, 10 plagues uh, to get us out of Egypt. Is it not great? Is he not good to us? Is it not like enough? Would it not be enough? You know, there is a word that we learn as children in Hebrew. It's word dayeno, what means it would be sufficient. I recommend you to learn this uh, word because sometimes it's like never enough. If we got something good, we want more. But according to the, uh, to the Passover story, we are so grateful to God for everything what he has done for us that we say if he would do this, like for example, he would just uh, bring us out of Egypt but never cross the Red Sea for us, it would be enough. If he would give us the Torah but never uh, build the temple or something like that, it would be enough. So it's a whole long, say, long story of our great uh, gratitude to God, what we are thankful him for. So uh, right now we are going to sing this song, Dayeno. We are grateful. We are thankful. He did so many miracles uh, for us. So... Uh, It's very easy to sing, hope, uh, probably.
Next time, if you want to complain about something, just remember something what God has done for you. And then just simply say, Diana. And praise God. And <laughs> you will do better. Uh, just to keep it in mind, we're, we're having now the second cup, the cup of judgment. And this cup represents our uh, exodus from Egypt. He brought us out from Egypt with great miracles that we just were reminded of. Do you remember what was the first cup about? Sanctification. He took us into his people in order, the second cup, to lead us out of Egypt with great miracles by great judgments over Egyptians. You should remember the benediction by now. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech olam borei pri hagafen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, the creator of fruit of the wine. And now we can drink. Now we are going to eat matzah. Because we went out of Egypt. We are, uh, we, uh, we are free. But at the same time, we eat matzah because God told us, tonight we got to eat the unleavened bread. So right now, by eating matzah, we fulfill his direct commandment. Can you imagine sitting at this ceremony? We can participate directly in what God told us to do. Sometimes we, and many times in our life, we try to guess what God wants me to do. Tonight it's easy. He told us to eat unleavened bread, we do, okay? <laughs> so the benediction for this, uh, for, uh, for the bread today is the same as at the time of Jesus. And I'm not sure about the time of Moses, but certainly at the time of, uh, time of Jesus. And uh, in Hebrew it sounds like, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who uh, brings bread forth from the earth. And now take some piece of matzah and fulfill the divine commandment by eating it. Yes. No, uh, if, you, if you want to eat the whole one, you certainly can, but I would recommend to eat just a little piece now, and then you can eat all of that later. <laughs> By the way, do you, uh, do you have like a... Uh, a bone on your uh, on your uh, Passover plate? Why do we have it there? It reminds us of a lamb. But we are not supposed to have the lamb on our Passover plate tonight. Because there is no table, a temple, sorry. Because there is not uh, sacrifice. Uh, so Jewish tradition says... You are not supposed to take this, so I'm doing something what is not, I shouldn't do. Uh, you are not supposed to take it. You are not supposed to touch it. You are not supposed to show an, a, a point over this uh, shank bone with your, uh, with your finger. Because it's like virtual. It's not there, and at the same time it's there because without the Passover lamb, or something reminding us of the Passover lamb. There is no Passover. So we got to put it there. But at the same time, we don't have it there. It's a dilemma for tonight. Anyway, you see, the uh, uh, you see this uh, 
like sliced, uh, sliced pieces of something. It's horseradish root, the real one. Mm. It's horrible. <laughs> it smells even horrible. It should be bitter. I, I haven't tried it yet. But now we are going, we are about to eat it. And uh, why are we going to eat it? Why should we eat it? Why? Why? Because our life was bitter in Egypt first and particularly because God told us to eat it. He said, eat it with the bitter herb. So horseradish. Again, it's participating in his direct commandment. Is it not exciting for me? It is. It's just we know per perfectly tonight what we are supposed to do. Eat the bitter herb. So we do. But now you dip the bitter herb in this, actually in this uh, brown mixture that is called haroset. And it's, uh, and it's a mixture of uh, uh, chopped apples, nuts, grape juice, and cinnamon, which symbolize the mortar that, uh, with which the children of Israel fashioned the bricks for Pharaoh's uh, building projects. And it's sweet. Why do we eat the bitter herb with a sweet haraset? Because we had a sweet hope even during the bitter life. The hope was that God is coming to rescue us. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commands us concerning the eating of bitter herbs. And now let's eat it, but eat it whole. Just put it in your mouth and chew it. Don't use water. <laughs> and don't use juice. Just experience it. <laughs> Is it not horrible? <laughs> yeah. Woo, it's ugly. That's, that's a life, that's a bitter life of, of the slavery. We just, like, we reminded how bitter it was. In fact, it was much more bitter back then. Do you think that it's it? that's it? No. There is one more. It's called Korech, and it's a sandwich. You take two small pieces of matzah, like this, and you put something in between. Guess what? <laughs> I just guess. <laughs> Bitter herb. <laughs> Why? Because, because the commandment says, eat. It was the unleavened bread, so the bitter herb with unleavened bread. Well, I don't want to, uh, I don't want necessary you to go through all this. So if you don't feel like eating the whole sandwich, just bite it a little. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do it. That's, wow. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. It's a real stuff. <laughs> now, 
We are coming to the best part of the Passover ceremony. What is the best part? It's called in Hebrew, Shulchan Orech. And the translation is like covered table. It's a Passover meal. It's a real dinner. And tonight we have an excellent meal for you ready. And the meal consists of matzah ball soup and uh, it's traditional Ashkenazi food and also Sephardic food uh, consisting of several things that you will experience. Uh, well, after you enjoy the horseradish, <laughs> By the way, do you see the egg on your plate? <laughs> is it not good time to take pictures, actually? <laughs> After horseradish is eaten? Thank you. Do you see the egg on your plate? It's the first what you can, you can start your dinner by eating this egg. Uh, just uh, divide it among yourself, cut it with the knife, dip it in, uh, in salt water, in, sorry, in tears uh, of the bitter life, uh, and, uh, and eat a piece of that, so, if you want. By the way, with the, uh, do you have this, uh, do you see this program, right? Do you see that with the meal, it's not over yet? So please remember, keep in mind, with the meal, it's not the end. There are a few more steps. We got to go. It's an order. It's a Passover. It's Seder. So we got to go through all the steps. Eat well. Enjoy your meal. We already said hamotzi, prayer over the bread. So we are set to eat, and then we will continue with the next step. Enjoy your meal. Thank you. 